using the fob and let you see how they work. And I'm going to aim at the same dot at the bottom of the target. One more shot. I'm shooting a little bit of right with this bow, but as you can see, those two arrows, they're touching each other. They're right there together. So even if you're off a little bit, if you're doing the same thing consistently, it'll show you exactly where you're hitting, so it's easy to adjust to it. And uh, so thank you for your time. I appreciate your business, and uh, be sure to let your buddies know about us. And if you're watching the video and you have not purchased the Eliminator or either the rear sight, and you're thinking about it, give one a try. I promise you they'll do everything they're supposed to do. Thank you, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Hi, folks. I'm Mitchell Smith, President of Extreme Outdoor Products. In this segment of, it, of the video, I'm going to explain to you how to set up the rear sight, how to mount it to the bow, and how to get it sighted in. Now, the rear sight works in conjunction with what you already have. There are several different models of sights on the market. You got vertical pins, you got horizontal pin configurations. So I'm going to cover each pin configuration step by step so everybody will hopefully understand how to mount this sight and how to get it sighted in. The rear sight. As you can see, it comes with a main mounting bracket, which is the flat piece. You got your rear tail section, and you got your rear pin. When it comes in the package, and the package will look like so, you'll see that the pieces are not together. Your front, your rear pin is mounted to your tail section. It's set up when you get it for a right-handed shooter. If you need it for a lefty, all you do is flip the, you're going to take this tail section, mount it on this side of the bracket, and flip the rear pin back up. Then they'll be ready for a lefty. Alright, as you can notice, you got horizontal slots at the front of the back. It, at the back of it, you got three different vertical slots. And you got two different holes drilled. Well, what these slots do is two different things. First of all, cable slide. You're going to take, normally the way this bracket would mount, you take your front side off, you lay my bracket against the riser and you put your front sight back on top of it. There's longer screws in the packaging to hold it in place. Well, the reason for the horizontal slots, this lets you move it from front to rear to get the distance between your cables and the back of the bracket. You need at least an inch and a half clearance. Okay, let's just say we've got this slid all the way forward as far as it'll go, and I still don't have my inch and a half clearance. I need some more clearance. Well, I can take this bracket, the rear tail section, I can take it off, and I can move it up to the next slot. That will give you another one inch clearance. Let's say I still don't have enough room. Well, we can take it and we can flip this over. You see how this is 45? This is a straight edge. Just turn it around. Put the 45 facing your cables, the straight edge facing your riser. And if you just want a little extra insurance, Limb Saver does make a cable stop system. They come two different types. All you do is, is you would pull your cables off right here off the cable slide bar, then slide the cable stop on, then slide the cables back on just like they came off. Now what this does it's not going to perfect the performance of your bow, but it will keep the cables from coming up and hitting the back of the bracket, and that's the main thing. If the cables hit the back of that bracket, bad things could happen. It won't be good. So that's, that's the safety tip. Okay. 
Now, since I've showed you how to mount the rear sight, there is a different way you can mount it as well. There's a long set and a short set of screws inside that package. Well, on the Matthews with the roller guide system, this bracket's gonna get up. If you mount it straight to your riser, it's gonna get up against the roller guide. So, you're not going to like that because it could cause vibration, could cause some extra noise. So you're not going to like it. To keep that from happening, okay, you got your front sight already mounted. You just mount your the rear sight on top of it. This bracket has two holes back here where a quiver goes, like a quicker quiver. The shorter screws will fit these holes. So all you do is lay your bracket on top of your front sight and mount it between your front sight and your quiver mount. That's the way you get around that. Okay. Now, once we have the sight mounted and we've got our clearance, next thing we're going to need to do is set the rear pin up for our anchor point. Well, with the peep inside your string, you're going to take my rear pin, you're going to line it up with the bow string. You're going to loosen these two screws up. This lets you move this tail section up and down. Now you don't want it where it'll just fall, but you do want it where you can slide it. You're going to center the top part of the Y in the center of your peep sight at full drop. Once you do that, we just got you to your anchor point. Well, let's just say I've got a brand new bow. It doesn't have a peep in it. Doesn't matter. Same thing. All you're going to do is position this on one side of the bowstring or the other, get the rear pin where you can see through it comfortable, and then you're going to adjust it to your anchor point. You're going to anchor where you normally anchor and adjust the rear pin to it. Same thing. Alright. Peep sight. We just got it set. We tightened two screws up. Now your peep sight comes out. If you're using a kisser button, get rid of it too. You no longer need it. And remember this, by getting rid of this, you're going to gain anywhere between 7 and 10 feet per second. If you're using a kisser button, you just gain another 5 feet per second speed. Now, the rear pin is going to offset your bowstring. It's going to be to the inside or to the outside. You position it where it's comfortable for you to look through at full drop. Once you get this done, just nug the rear pin. Don't tighten it up yet. I want you to close your eyes, draw your bow back, go to your anchor point. Once you get set, open your eyes up. You ought to be able to see through that rear pin with no problem. If you can't, readjust it to where you can. Then do that a couple times to make sure you got it right. Now, I'm going to cover the trophy ridge site first because there's some things you need to know about the trophy ridge. The, the pin closest to you, that's going to be your anchor pin. That's going to be the one that lines up in the, the rear Y pin. Now, this site has two different adjustments on it. You've got a major adjustment where you can adjust the whole site housing, and then you've got fine tune adjustments where you can uh, adjust the pins themselves they'll slide up and down like so. Well, every time you move this housing, you're going to have to realign this pin in the Y pin. Now, once you get that line, you're going to start on this particular site, you're going to start with your short yardage pin first. We're going to sight it in, say, at 20 yards. Then, we're going to set our next pin at our next distance. The bottom pin, or the pins you're lining up on, that pin's going to be on wherever it comes on at. There's no getting around it with this particular site. So, uh, and I was saying earlier in the video, if you got an arrow speed 260 and faster, you can sight one pin dead end on the ground at 25 yards. When you get up in your tree stand 14 feet off the ground higher, you shoot that one pin from zero to 35 yards and not change a thing. So it may be that you want to shoot one pin. If you want to shoot a one pin system, then you line it up on that top pin and you'll never see the other.